Hello, everyone. Welcome to 200 OK and to my talk, where I'm going to talk about securing Node APIs with decentralized identity tokens. So let's get started. I am Mohammed Shabazz Alam, a developer advocate at Magic, and what to expect from this talk. So we will go from user trust model of the internet is broken and understand how it is, and also what is decentralized identity token. And then we will build a node API using Express JS. And then we will build or secure the Node.js APIs with magic. So first understand how the user trust of the internet is broken. So user thinks of passwords or secrets specific to them to verify identity and usually hand them off to apps user owned by various companies. User trust the companies to store their secrets properly and securely, but many companies don't have their authentication uh, expertise and they don't have a team to run the security. User access the company's secret by literally showing the secret, consider them as writing, that, writing them in a piece of paper and handling them to the, uh, to the owner of the app. And each time it happens, there is a risk of exposing that sensitive data to hacker. Companies might get hacked and it has happened in past and they lose secrets along with users trust. The Equifax breach has cost them at least $1.4 billion. Hacker uses stolen secrets to impersonate users to access vital online services. You might have seen that the user's color has changed from like purple to red, impersonating the hacker. This problem compounds now that there are many companies acting on behalf of users to authenticate for them. And users' identity is no longer in their own hands, but controlled by a handful of large corporations. So what people have tried before magic is a zero knowledge authentication, which is a key based model. Instead of users thinking of secrets themselves, blockchain based public private key pairs are randomly generated to access apps. And it has its pros and cons that the users have complete control of their identity. And then like companies don't know the user secret, which is a more secure model. Users can use the same secret to access apps of a cleaner trust model where there are no identity silos by companies, but it has its cons that the users are likely to lose their keys. We are human and we do that, which will lock them out of good and lose their online identity and worse, get their, uh, get their, uh, get them stolen. And the concept of using key on the internet is too unfamiliar uh, for mainstream users because of bad UX. And how magic improves the trust so far. So magic comes with a delegated key management where magic leverages a large infrastructure as a service and secure user keys with hardware security models. Consider hardware security models as a YubiKey hardware security keys, but on the cloud. And with technology that hides and protects user private key from companies and even magic. So here the private keys are not seen by anyone, not even by magic. It has its additional pros, which is magic providing familiar passwordless auth UX to users for them uh, to retrieve their keys. A better UX can no longer lose keys. Magic doesn't store passwords and can't know users' key secrets. It has native support for multiple blockchains. It has only one con, which is magic relying on a single infrastructure as a service, which is going to be changed very soon. So what is DID token? DID token created by magic is adapted by prior tech like JWTs and W3's DID protocol. It encodes as a base 64 JSON string tuple representing proof and claim. It leverages the Ethereum blockchain and elliptic curve cryptographic to generate verifiable proofs of identity and authorization. These proofs are encoded in a lightweight digital signature, which is shared between client and server 
to manage permissions, protect routes and resources, or authenticate users. This is how a typical DID looks like, which has a proof and claim in the form of a tuple. And the claims are the data representing the user's access, which is get signed by Ethereum's personal sign method. And then it's get uh, uh, encoded as a base64 JSON string tuple. Generating a DIDT token uh, looks something like this, which has its claim, the user's data, which has issued at expiration time, who is the issuer of it, subject, audience, not before time, and unique ID. And then it gets signed again by using the Ethereum's personal sign uh, uh, function. And then it's convert converted into, uh, it's get encoded so that it's transported over HTTP. So you can read more about it on decentralized ID on our docs to understand what this means. And generating a DID token with magic is very simple. With just these line of code, you would be able to generate as well as log in a user. We first import the magic SDK, then instantiate that, and then call a function login with magic link and pass on the email the user's email. This by default generates a DID token, but you can also generate your own by providing a lifespan of any amount of time, more than 15 minutes, because 15 minutes is the default uh, expiration of a DID token. So how the auth flow looks like is that the, at the user or the browser level, they authenticate using a password, passwordless uh, uh, option and they, uh, they hit the client, uh, they authenticate themselves and client return a DID token. And then the user or the browser uh, try to access, tries to access the protected route, which is what our talk is about, building a node API and protect those APIs. And we pass on the DID token in the authorization header to the server. And at the server, server we validate that DID token using magic SDK. And once that is validated, we, we, we say that it's authenticated and allowed the next route. So let's build a Node API. There are many ways to build Node APIs, but what we will be using is a magic, make magic CLI tool to, uh, developed by magic. So feel free to run this in your terminal. You will be greeted with something like this. So it asks for your, uh, an app. Maybe we'll ask 200 demo server. And then once you name your project, it will ask for a secret key. So how do you get a secret key? Visit magic link and sign up for a free account. You will be signed up through this page. And once you are signed up, you will be greeted with something called first app. But you can always create a new app from here. But with this, I have already went ahead and created it. So it gives you two things like the publishable key and the secret key. So we will be using secret key as asked. Copy this, paste it here and select the NPM client. And once you do this, it, it runs a bunch of uh, codes, install it and runs a server on port 8080. Let's see how it looks. So I have already run it before, but it tries to run this. It says, presto, welcome to magic. It has multiple routes. It has a secret route. Once you do this, it says the authorization header is required, right? So let's see what this code has generated. So this will give you this, these five. The one to look for is index.js, everything is there. We first, in, in, uh, we call, uh, we include the magic SDK admin, uh, uh, like magic SDK admin package, and then the normal stuff of express. And it's always best to in, uh, have it, your environment variables in .env file and like call it like this. So this is how we use magic key and instantiate the magic server uh, using the server side method. 
So what this API do is that it has a list of to-dos apart from normal routes, which says presto, welcome to magic, which is an unprotected route. And it has a secret route, which is using a middleware, which is which I'm going to talk, show how it looks. But generally it has a to-do list. And what we are saying is that to-dos are unprotected. To access that, you can access it on your, uh, on your browser, but uh, wait, I'll show it. Uh, on, on, on a tool called Postman. But let's understand what is uh, uh, what is, is authorized. Apart from delete, post, put, and get, these are the basic uh, REST APIs. Uh, you can always see it by running in your terminal. So I, I'm not going to go on in detail in how it does. Just for the simplicity of this talk, let's see what is authorized function does. So it checks whether the uh, authorization header is set or not. And then if it is set, we extract the DID, to DID token from that, expecting it in the form of bearer token. And then we validate that DID token with magic.token.validate function and passing the DID token. Once that is done, we proceed on calling uh, a next function, which goes on to continue the route we are uh, like expecting it. So let's see how it, it looks. For a basic uh, route, it, it, it gives you welcome to Presto, but for secret route, for a normal thing, it will ask that the authorization header is required. So how to get that? Uh, and for that, we need uh, something, a template called, uh, like you can select again, npx make magic and select template next, which is what I'm doing but you can select any template, just run npx make magic. So let me show what it gives you. By default, it will give you this things. Uh, I have updated this line, which is using a state to set a DID token. And then we are setting uh, by setting the state by calling get ID token. And then we are displaying the DID token over here, right? Let's see how it looks. So it will once you once you install that it will run, again simply run uh, run through it and open a, open in localhost 3000 and by default you can after changing these lines uh, uh, like this one and this one and this one you would be able to get a DID token so let's copy this uh, uh, not straight away, but you will be greeted with a login screen. Then you enter your email. A email will come from magic. Uh, then you click on that email and you will be routed back to this page. And then it will be showing the DID token. So let's pass that as an authorization header, bearer token and passing the authorization header. So once you do that, it says that it has the DID token has expired because obviously I have used it earlier. Let's log out and try to hopefully do it live here. But let me open my mobile because it, it could, it comes on your email. Just per second, it open up and yeah, within seconds, uh, the email comes from magic. You will be saying that, yeah, this is me. Let's log in. And within seconds, just bear with me. Um, so yeah, we have successfully logged in and we have a DID token. Let's copy this and try again, passing this here and calling it. So you say, uh, you are in good hands, secured by magic. So this is what, uh, the secret route, uh, how you access the secret route, but let's try to fetch the to-dos which is uh, the REST, a REST APIs. Uh, there is a route called slash API slash to do's. It says that like sign up to magic, use this and use that. And you can obviously, these, these are not protected routes. You can access any of the routes by using this, the normal version of it, the again, use NPX. When you, once you try to uh, create um, a post or, or, or a to do, you, you would you'd pass a body uh, uh, with title that attending 200, okay. Once you do that, again, it, it, it would say that, please provide the authorization header, we will do that. 
again pass on the same variable what we have copied and yes it says that it's a 200 success and and you can confirm it here by fetching that like let's attending 200 okay so this is post and then we update it using uh, 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 using put so again doing the same it is the previous one so let's remove that copy and paste again so what i'm passing it here is that shabazz talk is amazing isn't it let's share on twitter tagging me mds wizard alum and my company magic labs once you do that the the id what we have created here attending 200 okay is now updated to shabazz talk is amazing isn't it and again we can go on to delete uh delete these things this is just a demo this has this has the expired uh did token so just to summarize uh these this is something uh how how we do um authorization here so let's again come back and see what has happened here uh in terms of when we say the express apx so so that was a quick demo how it it would look the unprotected and unprotected routes so so what we do here is that like uh, simple uh, express api and 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 let's just bear with me this is very simple but uh, it's it's for someone who is attending and making sure that they want to build an api in express and secure those apis so uh, what i have used is that there is a port variable and there is a magic secret uh, secret key variable right and then we pass on those in uh, uh, as here in the as a form of key and let's go over here this is not the typical uh, way of doing it you would obviously do it uh, with some sort of backend or maybe uh, mongodb or or something what you you prefer right and then uh, this this is a generic route which which says that like oh yes when when it's hit uh, uh, it it will run a, a server on port which is defined over here by default it's uh, if, if no port is defined it would be on port 9000 but luckily we have a port here on our environment variable which is 8080 right and then we have created a secret route so one way is to one way to protect the uh, route is to pass the is authorized like this as as a, uh, as a parameter in that uh, uh, function get function right so we do this and we say that like this would be a run before before passing on this thing the other way of doing is is that uh, using called app.use and is authorized this is how uh, you you protect and say, uh, define and uh, segregate the unprotected route like these ones and this is to say that uh, after this if there is any route this will be protected routes or this will use this function called is authorized so you can see here is that we are not using this way of protecting uh, our routes we are saying we are simply uh, creating a, a route uh, using app.post on api slash to do's and then uh, passing on like the normal stuff right but we are not using is authorized like this uh, or or here as a, another parameter right and then this is this is a put variable just to uh, just to uh, update that and uh, this is a delete which which is again uh, a way of protecting uh, using is authorized right and i have already gone with this step so there is not much, not much in here but this is a very basic again you just need a few step to secure your apis using magic which is to include this and firstly you would you would need install uh, magic sdk uh, slash admin and then you instantiate it uh, like this directly by passing the uh, the secret key like this or getting it through from the dot uh, env file and then the the next step is to just call this function that magic.token.validate right so this is as simple as that so i will not go in much in of the details and i will up, uh, continue with my slides which is uh, which is what i have used which is npx make magic and i have used the template next but feel free to use npx make magic and select any of the templates whichever you want
So the resources of this talk would be found on the API, that the Node API Express can be found on my GitHub uh, repo called Magic Express API. And you can find more about Node Admin uh, on our docs, like docs.magic.link, and what is decentralized ID, what is DID, what is DID token. You can learn more about it by visiting uh, Magic's docs. Um, also, there are multiple guides uh, on our page you can you would be interested in, for example, how to set, uh, set up the next uh, application with Magic or next application with Magic. And there are a bunch of guides, so uh, feel free to check out those. And do join our community page on community.magic.link. And if you have anything to share about this talk or anything in general, just tag us or tag me on Twitter at mdsbzalam. Or if you have a specific question about magic, you tag magic underscore labs. So I think that was it. Uh, the easiest way to connect with me is always, always Twitter, but here are other ways to connect. And I have also uh, created an NPX MDSVZ alum, run it in your terminal. You will be greeted with similar set of things uh, where you can follow me or ask questions about. And that was me. Uh, thank you for attending this wonderful talk. And uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Shabazz, thank you so much. That was a fantastic talk. Um, let's go Max, look. Max. Can you hear me? We good? Yeah, Max. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, excellent. Okay, uh, let me go and check out uh, the questions. We've got one. It's uh, so is an email required to obtain tokens, and are there any efforts to move away from email? Uh, so we have uh, multiple options as well. We have social logins where you you would be like obviously selected from multiple social login or social providers. But we also have something called WebAuthn, where you don't need any of your emails, social providers, just your uh, WebAuthn keys. For example, your uh, your security keys, uh, like YubiKeys, or your uh, Apple ID, uh, the Touch IDs, uh, that would be fine. And I think very recently, if you search on Twitter, Versal has created a demo for Magic and Versal using WebAuthn. So that would be a fun watch too. And that was with Versal, you said? Yeah, the demo demo is created by Versal uh, using Magic SDK of the WebAuthn. And that shows how you can like build the WebAuthn. But yeah, always check out the Magic website on how to work with WebAuthn on visiting docs. So when you visit the docs, there, it, there will be in the left-hand side a WebAuthn section, and which, which uses the web, web SDK, WebAuthn SDK to, to not use, for example, like emails, but using your hardware security modules, uh, which I talked about. Gotcha. Um, OK, uh, another question. Can the decentralized tokens be duped by a, via a false account? No. Uh, not that we are aware of that, but you cannot get uh, you cannot dupe that because how how it's work is that uh, I, I talked about using the private key. So Magic uses a private and public key, and private key is owned by the users, which is which is like never leaves the system, and it's always uh, secured by users. And it's not that it's it's in in the hands of the users. But it's in it's it's in the cloud. You can read more about how we do the delegated key management on our uh, docs security page, and there will be a security uh, like the delegated key management section where you learn about how we do the delegated management. But uh, but to answer your question, uh, though the DID token cannot be forged. Okay, um, Doji asks. How much does the Ethereum integration layer cost, and how do you manage these costs? Uh, I'm not sure if he's if it's more like if we're getting to like DAP or if just in general, just the integration. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's more about the DAPs uh, uh, side of it. But uh, I I I would answer uh, as as much I know about this uh, step. But um, like what what Magic has tried is that it uses uh, the Ethereum blockchain. 
to simplify the uh, uh, authentication where where the authentication pro process was always centralized uh, even if you have heard about public private keys the private keys was always with the centralized providers and what 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 moving from that uh, using ethereum blockchain what has what it has enabled us is to uh, bring back the uh, control of users in their own hands by providing the pub like the private key in their hands and even the magic is not able to see the private key so it's it's quite a de like a, a trusted cleaner trusted model and which is everything is uh, decentralized and coming back to your question on how much it costs is that uh, going forward i would say that we have a, a new referral and pricing model coming up where yeah, like if you sign up for free like it's it's free you would you would uh, you would get a chance to get like something around 9 logins and also the the pricing of that is like even if you cross that the pricing would be 0. Point, uh, something like 0085 or something something like very small small than any any of the providers uh, what it would be offering so that's 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 what i i would answer with this question no, that's that's good to know that it scales well for if you're doing testing. Um, yeah. Let's see. Do another. Apologies. I want to make sure I get this. Don't miss anything. Oh, okay. Um, can can make magic work in a mixed environment? Uh, can we move our legacy apps over in stages? uh so make magic is under the hood using uh some of our guides uh which is what what it tries to do is that it it gives you a quick onboarding uh, experience with magic make magic is not uh, something that you would run like uh, without the use of our templates so there is a repo open source repo on our magic labs github handle uh, create magic app and you would see a bunch of templates which is uh, some representing a uh, few for guides, for example, like Next, Next, these have the guides as well, and it just replicates the guide, which is uh, a quick way of getting bootstrap with magic. Uh, so uh, yeah, obviously you can do with legacy apps, but in terms of legacy, I would have, I would need more context. For example, if you are talking about Java related applications, I think we don't have any Java SDK right now, but if there is uh, in future, uh, we would love to explore that as well. Uh, gotcha, thank you. Um, and yeah, they didn't put any more context, so you answered that perfectly. Um, okay, uh, what happens to the data if the Ethereum later gets deprecated? Uh, um, again, it's going more towards dApp, but uh, yeah, um, how 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 that would be like how that deprecated layer would sound like yeah i would need more context here but yeah i, I can come back again on uh, or maybe on twitter with uh, reaching out with my team and uh, this the dapp experts and they they would be able to answer this perfectly so i can uh, do a tweet after this talk like the the q and a's to answer this question sure. Um, and sorry, just just to double check, where where can we find you online? Just on Twitter, or are you in a couple places? Yeah, you can find me on a bunch of the couple places. So if you have your terminal running, just run npx mdsvz alum. That's it. You will find a bunch of options to connect with me. The easiest would be Twitter. I'm always live there. And like again, mdsvz sbz is a shot of Sherbaz. but yeah, mdsvz alum uh, is 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 to find uh, most of the places where I am. That's a really great way to find you. I like that you're using command line for it. Um, <laughs> oh, the context for that question um, about the Ethereum later getting deprecated. The, the question, the broader question is, I wonder if you could move the ledger to a different blockchain. And so is it, um, is it Ethereum dependent or could you? is it something that could be, be moved around? Uh, I, I think that could be done. It's not just with the uh, Ethereum uh, layer, but as if now we are using Ethereum personal sign to do most of the stuff. But I think uh, I can maybe ask my CTO and come back with you. Maybe he has a better answer to this. That's perfect. We, we appreciate the follow-up. Um, I think that's going to be where we stop for right now. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you so much for talking to us uh, about this. We really appreciate it. And it was a, a great way to, to finish out the morning. Uh, and thank you for... Uh. What, 
Oh, what's your what's your time zone right now? What time is it for you? Yeah, it's uh, ten thirty-ish right now here uh, at night. So oh, we're, not we're, a, yeah, you stayed up late. A good time. <laughs> Thank at you. Good time to have. Thanks, um, uh, uh, Oklahoma two hundred. Okay, two hundred. Okay, is perfect for my talk. Like it always gives you a two hundred. Okay, if something you know good has happened, so I can totally relate two hundred. Okay, with all my server calls. So thanks, uh, two hundred. Okay, for having me, and thanks, Max. Thanks, Doji. Thanks, Emily. Everyone in the team uh, coordinating with me. So it was really fun uh, presenting the talk here. Well, we appreciate you. We'll be right back with some more messages about our sponsor before we break for lunch. So give us just a sec to transition. Thank you all.